Hey, Casper. Hey, Michael. How are you? Yeah. Hey, y'all. How are you, Michael? Long time no see. Hey, Clancy. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Denise. Hi. Hi, guys. Sorry, I'm having a Wi-Fi uh, data situation here at the onset. Hi, Dana. Yeah. Hi, Seth. I love that Seth is just like rocking the outside in the sun in Brooklyn. Great to see all of you guys. Okay, hi, I'm Ed Newmeyer. I'm the screenwriter of Starship Troopers, and I also played the uh, convicted murderer in an uncredited uh, uh, performance. I'm Ed Newmeyer, and I wrote the screenplay, and I played the convicted murderer. I think I buy that. I, I buy Clancy as Ed, even more than I buy Ed as Ed. <laughs> Clancy Brown, Sergeant Zim. Hi, I'm Jake Busey. I played a character by the name of Ace Levy. Hi, I'm Seth Gilliam. I played Sugar Watkins. I'm Denise Richards, and I played Carmen Banyas, or Ibanez, sometimes we would say on set. I'm Michael Ironside. I played Jean Ratchik, teacher, and Ada Ratchik's Roughnecks. I'm Patrick Muldoon. I played Xander Barklow. I get my brain sucked out. Ah! Casper Van Dien. I was Johnny Rico. Rico's rough next. Hi, I'm Dina Meyer. I played Dizzy Flores, and the kind of girl who's a mixed squad leader. I'm gonna do a shout out to Neil Patrick Harris, who couldn't make it because he's working, and Paul Verhoeven, who couldn't make it because he's working as well. But we love him and we miss him. And we wanna say uh, thank you to the rest of the cast that couldn't make it here too, because we had a, we had a wonderful group of people. I cannot believe it's been 25 years since we filmed the movie and I have to say we were all pretty much at the same level in our career and which was just such a wonderful bonding experience that I think that um, we all have you know really fond memories. Oh no I, it was one of the greatest experiences I, I just remember looking over there and, and seeing Paul Verhoeven, and Ed Newmeyer, Phil Tippett and John Davison behind the camera and going god we're, we're, we're making another Robocop. I always go back to before we started filming when we were doing the boot camp and there was a blizzard. Some of you guys actually toughed that blizzard out, didn't you? Some of you like dug, what, three in, three to six inch trenches and stayed in the tents and I rode it out, right? with Casper <laughs> and Jake for the night. Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were out there and you're like, oh my God, I'm so cold. Everything's gone, my tent's gone. <laughs> there was camaraderie in the sense that all of us were basically at the beginning of what would be our respective careers. We were all very young and, and um, it was very exciting. It had a summer camp vibe. Clancy and Michael, these are men who were married and they, they'd experienced a lot of life. They had wisdom. We were just a bunch of idiots that were just sponges. The Dakotas kind of bonded us all together. Yeah. The, just the absolute location and the situation up there and stuff. It was just, there were no frills. Everyone fights, no one quits. If you don't do your job, I'll shoot you. Do you get me? We get you, sir! I, for the longest time in my career, right after that, I don't even know if I ever told you this, Michael, but I, I, I would hear your voice in me for some of the tips you would give me as, as an actor. It took me about a week of actually him you know, calling me by my first name and having conversations with him to confess that I was afraid to talk to him because he was so scary in scanners. What was that when he fell into the, oh my God. We were waiting for him to fall into the pit for three weeks. Brad Jack hits right. the dust, Brad Jack gets, Seth had this whole song he had written that was Brad Jack yeah. kicks the bucket, <laughs> yeah. Brad Jack kicks the bucket. <laughs> See you, Michael. Bye, Mike. Oh, it's good to see you. One of the most exciting scenes, but also scary, was the last day of us filming, and it was me, Jake, and Casper, and we filmed us running out of the tunnel, and there was a huge yeah. fire <laughs> explosion. And I'll never forget them telling us, do not fall. You got all ass right. and keep running no matter what. And I'll never forget the three of us. We were like holding hands right before we started. And the adrenaline was so fun and exciting. But it was also, there was a moment where it was like, mm, things could go sideways. This is a huge fireball behind us. 
My favorite uh, stunt moment was actually was actually watching Casper ride that giant beetle or whatever it was. At one point, it looked like he was surfing the damn thing. That was a moment where I watched and thought, oh, that's going to really be good. I have something for you, Seth. When you shot the bug and there was the green all over your face. Oh, yeah. Oh, that freeze, And you're like, yeah. 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 And it was about 103 degrees that day. And that green slime was about 112. And he hit me right in the mouth with it when I was doing the line. So I swallowed like, I don't know, maybe 12 ounces of that green goo. I didn't write any of those lines for Seth. Seth came up with those lines. <laughs> and I, it made my job a lot easier. Cease fire. And I have to say, one of my favorite moments in Starship Trooper is put your hand on that wall, soldier. Put your hand on that wall, Trooper. Yeah, that was a day. That was, that was a <laughs> day, all right. Put your hand on that wall. All it's right. so, like, at so shockingly funny. <laughs> Well, that's one of Paul Verhoeven's favorite gags. He's still, like the other day, he just said, that's the funniest thing I've ever done, is Jake having to put his hand on the wall. Medic! I remember, Denise, when we had to shoot one of the, the, the last scenes, when uh, Clancy captures the bug, and then we're all coming out, and Neil says, It's afraid. It's afraid! <laughs> That shot we shot, I think it was the second day we shot, and that was like one of the last things in the movie. You'd been stabbed. Oh, I felt terrible. It was the first time it was a huge shot at Sony Studios, and they put all this crap on my body. And then I had to like fire a gun and someone fired. I thought I got shot, and I was so scared <laughs> because people don't understand when it like expels and whatever, you feel it. Yeah, and I clearly didn't think about it. I just walked out like nothing happened. <laughs> okay, so it's funny that you say that because I had a problem with, with one of the performances with mine um, when when Paul wanted me to um, stream when we pulled the, uh, the, the pincer out of me after I got skewered. I got the thing stuck inside me and, and he pulls it out. And normally, if you, if you have a punctured lung, you're not really going to be able to get enough air to scream. But Paul, I'm punctured lung. I got punctured lungs. I have no air. No, 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 no. Scream. I don't be so difficult, Tina. The producer had also been saying that you shouldn't pull that out because it would be medically wrong. So by the time Paul got to, he'd probably exactly. already lost his patience. I remember there was a great deal of concern, starting with the director and all the way through, uh, right up to the day of, of production, how are we gonna do this? Because the, 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 the creatures aren't really there. How will we do this? <laughs> and there was just all of that. And then they started doing it and it just was like, they made it up and it went very well. I remember the first day you guys shot, I think a, a lot of visual effects was at the fortress sequence. And you had, to, you had to shoot like, you did like something like 35, which was a lot plates in a single day of battle where you guys were shooting and shooting and shooting. And it was amazing to watch. <laughs> We would go to work and the yeah. sun would be setting and we would, we would finish when the sun, and we would drive home 45 minutes to the hotel when the sun was rising. So it was, and then we'd sleep during the day and, and then turn around and and, uh, and then do it all over again. But I love that. Yeah, it always felt like camp to me. I wish we had social media back then to film all of us behind the scenes because that's, I think, what the fans would have loved to see because I'll never forget the sticky buns in Wyoming. I'll never oh forget, God. like, <laughs> the tiny wow. hotel, we, motel, hotel, motel, whatever. I don't know. It was lovely that That's we say him. that. <laughs> and it was just that. so fun to be able to document. Um, it would have been to be able to document it that way, too, for us to uh, show behind the scenes. Do you remember the hot tub with all of us in that weird hotel? <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> Patrick, you are. Sorry. <laughs> and you, Casper. This is about to take a left turn. I would wrap this yeah. up quickly. Yeah, it feels like it. So how'd your kids do? Infantry, sir. Good for you. 
Mobile infantry made me the man I am today. I think seeing it for the first time, actually, all put together in the Cinerama Dome, it was breathtaking. I thought it was going to be the biggest hit that ever hit the the hits the hits place. And it wasn't, and I, 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 I don't know why. Do you get me? Sir, yes, sir! I ran into a marketing guy once at Universal who had done marketed all their pictures, and they said that they'd done a study once. The thing that women hated the most of anything were spiders. And I thought that that was a good reason to make the movie. You know, everybody's scared of spiders. And also, I remember the other thing that happened is I remember my kid was in school at that time, and he came home, and he, so he was in the third grade. And he said, Dad, everybody at school wants to see your movie. And I thought, and their moms aren't going to let them. And that was the first time I thought. So I think part of the problem was our audience wasn't old enough yet. Come on, let's see if they post the math final. And one of the great things about this movie is it's a rite of passage film. People had to sneak into. I remember there was some controversy that happened that created some kind of an angst with the theaters to where they they all of a sudden were very very specific about an identification thing i think that's because of the shower scene most likely the co-ed shower scene isn't that hilarious it's fine to have decapitations but my god a co-ed yeah. shower scene no nudity no boobs i'm going career officers training all the way ah future sky march Starship Troopers was prophetic, and it really hit me how prophetic it was uh, because it, it was 9-11. And instead of America going to Afghanistan, where the problem was, we got sold to war in Iraq. And, and it, it happened. Do you want to know more? Fully automatic burrito. Who wants to hold it? Citizen rule. People making a better tomorrow. <laughs> Would you like to know more? I remember asking Paul, what is this movie about? And Paul said, it's about fascism versus communism. And the good guy may not be who you think he is. I think when you project cynically project into the future, you're almost always right. So, um, uh, uh, I don't know, yeah, it was kind of weird that that happened. This year we explored the failure of democracy, but the social scientists brought our world to the brink of chaos. It was great so to good to see all of y'all. Uh, Dina, it's so good to see, see you. See you Dina. Seth, are you leaving us? I am, I love I you. Love you, brother. I love you, Seth. Great love to see you all. Hi, Seth. Give me the You trying to be a hero, walking? You're trying to kill some one funny thing, I think I was sitting next to Denise in the premiere and and like halfway through. At this first screening with Pat and I, we looked at each other and he said, Oh my God, why didn't they tell us it's a comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's doing their part. Are you? You can't pretty much go anywhere without somebody going, wait a minute, you're from Starship Troopers. And just yelling Johnny Rico uh, or yelling bugs at me. Just my kids grew up with people yelling at me, different quotes from the movie. Some of them I didn't even say. Some of them were uh, the lines other people said, but my kids have always heard people yelling at me. Um, so I, I, I think the, the initial time when I first saw it, when we saw that, that screening that Patrick and Denise were sitting next to, I was sitting next to Dina. And we were like, oh my God, we were like Clancy. We were saying, this is gonna be the biggest movie. This is gonna be so huge. And Jake, you were there. So the videos were sitting next to each other. And we were like, this is gonna be the biggest movie ever. And, yeah. uh, and then I was shocked that it wasn't at first. And I, I was really annoyed that they, didn't, that they didn't get it. One day in the 90s, uh, or the, 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 the early aughts I was at, I was getting some propane at a very hot, you know, rental yard or something. And there was a guy there and the way he moved and the glass, sunglasses he was wearing, I realized, oh, that guy's, uh, that guy's a vet. That guy's a military guy. I thought, that guy's probably a sergeant. And he came over and I said, uh, I said something like, are you, uh, are you, he said, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is my, I've had three deployments now in Afghanistan. And uh, I really like being in Afghanistan. I'm a sergeant. I like pushing soldiers, he said. And I said, I wrote a, uh, I wrote a science fiction, I wrote a war movie once. And he said, 
without breaking stride. Starship Troopers is my favorite movie. And let me tell you why. And I said, why? And he said, well, because remember that scene where the lieutenant gets shot and, 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 the, and the, guy, uh, the guy in charge doesn't know what to do. And then another guy says, kill him, kill them all. That's what I did. <laughs> so. <laughs> Casper, you've told me a million stories about how much this has meant to, like in, in Afghanistan, there were people flying the mobile infantry flag. There yeah. were, there's a Johnny Rico CrossFit gym. And there's a Rico drop next fit. One of the guys. No way. Guy. That's amazing. And he had a, he had a mural of, of like a, a version of me, I guess with a gun or what could have been any of us because you know that damn helmet's on but he was like Rico's Roughnecks in Afghanistan. I think all of those people came back and they appreciated the, the after the war I think this movie may, meant more to people because we really no. hadn't had a war since Vietnam. We I've had so many Korea. people tell me that so many military guys go um this you're the reason why I signed up or Denise is the reason why I signed yeah, that's up. right Denise <laughs> is the reason they all signed up yeah, I was like yeah. so for me I didn't you know I was like well I'm a great thank you for your service so it's just it's always interesting to see that I echo the same thing military people so appreciate the movie and it's wonderful to be a part of something that means something to our military guys you know and and women I also noticed that Paul said the other day, uh, he said, well, you know, my all my movies are fading except for the science fiction movies. And I've noticed over the years, there have been like top 10 lists of Paul Verhoeven's films. And Robocop and Starship were always kind of in the middle, safely in the middle. And there were other films that were considered better. Uh, and now the number two films are, uh, Robocop is number two and Starship is number one in the last list I saw. So I guess uh, we have relevance and we're in the future still, so. You should write a sequel, Ed. Maybe I will, I don't know. <laughs> well, I think I'm done with that. <laughs> well, this was great. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. Thank you so much. We are so excited for, I can't believe it's the 25th anniversary. And I love that we were all able to come together and we've all, for the most part, have been able to stay in touch with each other. And even though we haven't, the ones that we haven't, we were able to pick up where we left off. And that is the beauty, I think, of being uh, in this movie, the camaraderie and having that bond and that connection. So thank you so much, everyone, for enjoying our film. Yes, thank you. And you know what I got to say, um, to be able to do one movie, and have three action figures, it says a lot to me. My wow. my work here oh, is done. Jesus. Lucky you. <laughs> I just want to tell you guys all, that I, I enjoy so much watching you guys over the years. It's interesting. I don't know if other people feel this way or if you've had this, but every time I see you in something, I go, oh, there they are. It's like having yeah. a little extended creative family oh, that was bonded together. And yeah, anyway, I really enjoyed that. You almost live as characters in my mind. Absolutely. Yeah, I love Absolutely. watching. I love I love watching a movie and then I love that. But oh my god, TV show. Me and I'm too. always just so excited. Look at him. Have you ever seen anybody so pleased with himself? But you know what? It's a great film and uh, it stood the test of time. And um, I'm really glad I was a part of it. And I'm glad to have met all of you guys, I consider you guys family and I'm always moved when I see or speak with any of you. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, do I have to talk about Dina and Denise a lot to fans? Yes, but it, you know, it's okay. A lot of us have worked together over the years because- Oh, of we have. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it really is special uh, because we, we went through the making of the movie together, but we became closer and closer over the years. One of the things, one of the things I'm very thankful for is of all the people in the film, I have had the pleasure of working with Patrick and Denise. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've we've done a lot of a lot of projects together. And then of late, Casper and I have been doing some stuff together. We did Western last year with Behringer. I mean, it's great. It's it's nice to have a familial jam going here I, you know it's very cool very cool i'm thankful yep. pat and i who we call each other sweet babe hi sweet babe we really dated right sweet babe after the movie well during and then after 
But then we uh, and before and before. <laughs> Nice non sequitur. Thank you. Well, it finally comes out. You heard it here. We have the ships. We have the weapons. We need soldiers. Soldiers like Captain Carmen Ibanez. This is the captain speaking. All personnel prepare for drop. Soldiers like Private Ace Levy and Lieutenant John Rico. Come on, you ape. You want to live forever? We need you all. Service guarantees citizenship. Hey, thanks everybody for watching us. Thank you guys for being here. I love all of you guys. I'm so grateful for it. I can't believe 25 years. Um, let's let's not make it be so long next time. I love you all. Love you. Ditto. <laughs> See you later.